recorded live at Whitewood Lanes in Lubbock, Texas. Sorry in advance for the errors here for part two of our title matches. This one, the scratch division, right in front of us. We'll keep an eye on the far left as the girl scratch is going on as well. Scratch used mulligan format today. Bowlers got two do-overs to use as they see fit. One more if they made the cut, one more if they made the finals. Carlos managed to save all three for the step ladder, but it had to burn through two of them to get by Will Davis in the semifinal. Caden also managed to only use one of them previously, so he's got three to use in this match. Big advantage, but not an insurmountable advantage by uh, any means. We bowled on a brutal short pattern today. Cut was minus 144, somewhere in that area, lower than a 170 average to make it to round two. Caden, however, thought we were bowling on house today because he killed him. Shot 287, scratch game two to get to plus 84. Uh, let's see here, three wins in the semifinal to consolidate a plus 150 and easily have the top seed. The only four bowlers scratch that were plus were the four bowlers that made the step ladder today. Will beating Callista Fritz in round one. Carlos turning the tables with Shane the win in team. round two. Ready in the Carlos three straight spares to open up while Caden's gone strike spare strike to build a three pin early lead. As you see, shots missed to the left, cannot, will not hold pocket. There's just no way. Too short, too much friction. Got to get a far right break point without grabbing on it and probably using some pretty weak equipment along the way. Of course, Carlos standing at eight foot four, he can get it done with ball speed as well. Switches the plastic for his 10, cross lane, good form. But, target a little off, he whiffs that spare. You have the option to reshoot that spare if you want. I wouldn't at this point, he doesn't either. Caden, your current all-conference points leader, he has traveled a ton this year and it's paying dividends. Two career titles, including one scratch this year in this conference up at Pulaski. So he has liked the uh, mountain conference field. He must be unaffected by time zone changes, which makes one of us. Two hour time change from Seattle to Lubbock. That, it's amazing how much two hours messes with you. I felt like I was getting up at two in the morning today <laughs> to get here. Perfect on lane five, hasn't struck yet on six, but leaves a make a mistake. Chloe Keelick over there playing Callista for the girls' scratch. Chloe was really throwing the ball well today. Had a tough loss in the handicap title match. Well, it's good to see Callista on camera in her, I believe, senior season with us. Glad to see her making scratch finals, throwing the ball well also. Plastic as well, two-handed version, and the unfortunate chop brings the wry smile of dismay from Gata. Well, it's a three-pin game as they split missed spares in the fourth, and he does have the option to reshoot that. I certainly wouldn't in that case. No thanks indeed, yes, wise choice. If at all possible, you want to have three chances in the 10th frame to do whatever you need to do. There's some interesting decisions already in this step ladder. Will could have, Will could have been out of here with a mulligan still in his pocket as he elected not to use it against Callista and gave Callista a chance to win. She wasn't able to do it and that ended up being the right call, but you really got to judge a few different things at once. Caden playing a similar line as the righties with that far left break point with the good old purple hammer. What would we do without purple hammers, bowlers? <laughs> oh, Callista's just got four in a row over there. They're actually going a really good girl. Caden also rocking the I Am patch. I Am Bowling, one of our title sponsors. Anybody who wears I Am gear while they bowl as a piece of the $5,000 bonus scholarship prize they put up at the end of the year. I don't believe this guy has an I Am shirt on, but he's got a really good excuse why not. We'll explain that in a minute. Look out as that one hooks by the eighth and 
the chops happen like they did with the 4.7, but you can't miss single middle deck spares like that. That's a bad one. As he falls into the lead, into the, into the, the trailing spot as a result. Fritz working on a four bagger over there. There she is. There the pins are. There's a five bagger. No, it's not. I guess the ten pins should. No mulligans involved over there, of course. I scared Chloe. I told her Callista was blown scratch, so she gets three mulligans. Oh. Chloe didn't care for that one bit. Carlos has most of the hair out of the way, so you can see he's wearing Arizona Christian University on his back as he saw his that rack. He was presented that shirt today and did his signing with that school to start off the tournament today. So Bill's going to lose a really good employee here at Whitewood as he heads to Phoenix. Because when it's 100 and dusty here in July, he can now go where it's 120 and dusty. Yeah. <laughs> and dry. And stay indoors. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Try and explain to my friends back east that the summer is the winter because you stay inside and close the doors for a couple months until it's safe to peek out. Let's see if he can get this ball far enough right to hold. Whoa, he certainly got it far enough. Up. Thanks, announcer guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knew, he knew as well as I knew that he had to get that ball further to the right. He was missing left, and that ball was just checking way too early. Up to you. Sure. Sure. So he does elect to use the mulligan on that shot, so the gutter ball goes bye-bye. It's an interesting spot. It's the fifth frame of the title match. You certainly don't want to be left with one in your pocket. However, you don't. Hector, number 36, your order's ready in the grill. Hector, number 20, 36, your order's ready in the grill. However, you don't get full potential value by using this mulligan here. You get the most potential out of if you use it on a double, right? Here he's only using it on one strike. Sometimes you're forced to use it in different spots, and this may well be one. Certainly nothing wrong with using it here, but it would help a heck of a lot if he strikes. Wow, what a brave and outstanding shot. The hardest shots you throw are peeling it off your hand after you've thrown it in the right gutter when you know you need to get it to the two to three board to strike. That is an exceptional shot from Scott on that spot. Let's see if Gaby can answer. Our page is JBT 900. Giant thanks and a big aloha to Bill and Monica Wood. Owners here are off on a well-deserved little vacay. Put a lot of money into this place. Beautiful masking units. Restrooms joined the modern age, I see. Wonderful. Fresh side outside as well. Great hosts of our tour. I love coming to Lubbock every year. Good shot from Caden. All you, baby. Caden elects to use one of his. <laughs> Sorry. The only way you know how to use these computers is if you work here like Carlos does, or if you're 48 years old like I am and you grew up on these computers. <laughs> Either one works. Carlos will fill in whatever he does on this. So that leaves Caden with two. And again, an interesting spot to use it there. Not max value to use it on an open, but he doesn't want to let Estrada run away with this game, so may well be time to do so. The killer here is if you don't strike, do you burn a second one in the same frame? That's a good ball. Yeah, pretty shot. All right. Unfortunately, he didn't have to make that secondary decision. He's got 77 through 5, which means he trails by about 18 carve into that lead if you can double up here in the seventh. When we first did this for format a couple times early on, like 20 years ago, we allowed more mulligans. And I think it was J.R. Monteith, he got to a title match and he had six chances to strike to win and he missed the first five of them. Wow. And the place just said that the crowd just kept getting louder and louder every time he missed and on his last chance he did strike to win. That was a crazy day. 
Uh oh. We might see our set. I was almost. I would too. In this spot, yeah, once you use the first one, you're trying to get that double. You kind of got to here. As that mistake will go bye bye. Aren't you jealous, bowlers? How many times you sit there in league and say, man, if I only had that one shot over? He's got a couple of them over. The girls' match is fantastic over here. Callista just missed a spare. Chloe's working on three in a row, and boy, that that light seven has been her bugaboo. That's been the only thing she hasn't been carrying over there. We're gonna go catch a piece of that after this shot. That was great on his first redo. Can you do it? Oh, oh. Well, well, boy. If he left something more makeable, I think he'd have to consider saving it. This is bizarre, is what that split is. I think you got to burn through the last one. Yeah, I would too. All right, so Caden's mulligans are gone. And this has been a very high quality girl scratch match Except over here. We, we won't, neither lady would like to talk about the eighth frame. It leaves Chloe 23 pins behind as that slight hit seven pin has been about the only thing that's gone wrong for Chloe these last two games. And sure enough, I say that, and it's a light hit seven pin, go figure. The bowling gods are nasty that way. When you miss one, they come back and throw another one at you. Just throwing the ball so well today. Physically holding up so far. This is almost two tournaments worth of bowling and win one today. She has bowled a ton. She'll go uh, go full body potato overnight and try and keep everything in line. Nice job at the spare that time. Here's Madeline's third chance. No! Oh, no. Finally pries the ball off his hand, throws it dead flush perfect. And ouch, a solid 10 at an inopportune moment. Yikes. Carlos rather happily changes that one to a nine. <laughs> oh, you have one still? Or you're done too? One do. You used your do over. That's right, so we are mulligan list the rest of the way. Straight up bowling, as they say. First things first, cover this 10 pin if you're Caden. Put that bad break out of your head. They'll get it. Oh man, that was a whole lot of labor in the seventh frame to end up with nine spare. My goodness. Well, that's his benefit for holding on to him, or at least it's nine spare, and it wasn't any of the other options were not as good. Chloe can max for 201. Callista needs a mark in one of these last two frames in count. This would be a good chance at a mark, but you never know in these short patterns. She's all over that five. I don't know where Callista's peanut gallery is. I fully expected Nathan to be here when Callista makes a step ladder, but I guess he had to work or something. I was probably avoiding work by bowling right now. I'm just taking a guess. Oh! As Carlos says, I see your bad break and I raise you a pocket 5-7. Carlos throws a tank. I bet he doesn't leave a 5-7 very often at all. He can't mulligan it. What you get is what you get. Now the rest of the way, as this is getting squirrely, we, which is not a surprise, given what they bowled on today. This is who can dig out marks the rest of the way. Five is pushed a little, so it's a little more makeable, but yeah, that's not gonna do it. That will give him, what is that, 120? 121 through 7. And after all that fuss and bother and do overs and do overs and do overs, we got a four pin game. Oh, no more mulligans. No more mulligans. Funny, funny how that all worked out. <laughs> Carlos snuck in the cut at minus 114, then shot 689 for his three semifinal games. Excellent series to jump up to the two spot. That's pretty good. And good enough. Just holds on to the tail end to get the 4 7 out. Strike in the eighth. Continues to lead by four. It's Caden and his fan. 
step up. Biggest fan is Pop to my right, and I got Carlos's mom to my left, and <laughs> staring each other down right between me here. But no, we're not kidding. <laughs> That's right. That's right. A lot of oh, please, 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 please going on. Oh, without a doubt, this is way harder on the parents yeah, than the boys. Yeah. We learned that a long time ago, no question. Ah, but after two rotten breaks on either side, they both throw great shots in their eight frames. A bit of four pins. Now, when you're bowling, you got something you know physical to do. Right, when you're right, watching, right. you can just like sit back here helpless. Uh huh. Yeah. Helpless. <laughs> well, Lester finishes at 214. That's good enough to win girls scratch. So Chloe wins U17. Callista wins girls scratch. We already knew Addison and Haney won. Hayden and not Haney. Been struggling with that all day. One handicap, one division left to solve. Who can pure the shots in the ninth and tenth? That's pretty good. Yep. The thing about this, these, this and these short patterns is you pretty much know it's good at 30 feet. You hit that spot between about the two, three, four board at about 40 feet on either side. You're gonna throw. It's gonna hit pocket. So it's not like these impossible shots where there's just nowhere to go. There's a pretty defined space that you got to get the ball to, regardless of rev rate style. Yes, it is. Yes. Having said all that, as Caden accurately says, it is hard to get it there. But at least there's a target. Sometimes these hard shots devolve into just nothing, and there really isn't even anything to shoot for. Here it's a matter of execution. Natalie took the lead and has that double working into the tenth. Can Carlos take it right back and set up the same scenario? Big shot, one six. Oh. That ball, that ball was eight inches from staying on the lane, and I bet striking. Now he doesn't lose any count, so that's not an end of the world shot right there, but he's got to trust himself to put it a half an inch further left from there. And he'll be right in this game if he can still spare this up here in the ninth. He was great off the, the gutter ball that he mulliganed earlier in the match. So find the uh, stones to do it one more time. Gets it out. I, I can't tell you how impressive that is to, to do that twice in one game. To, the trust in your game and your physical abilities to do that is just fantastic. So he only trails by six pins now. So we head into the ten. What are you asking? I didn't realize those walls were carpet. They are carpet, and I earlier wondered, maybe you as a local asked me this. So this is the sidewall here. We're in Lubbock, Texas. There isn't an inch change in elevation for 300 miles in any direction. What are these? It's Arizona. They're hills. There aren't any. They're, no, they're like The tallest. tallest thing for 200 miles in any direction is a cow. Here's Carlos in the tent. It's there. Ah, come on, ball. Got that ball to get further down the lane and just wiggled at a weird spot there. Spare makes Caden get a spare. Yeah, there's. Someone suggested sand dunes. Well, you gotta go to Alamogordo for that. There ain't none of them around here either. It is fields. And my dinner out in those fields. So, just ask Monica later on what's going on there. They say around here you can watch your dog run away from TV. <laughs> oh, hook. Oh no, that is not what we needed. What do I Not much. I can tell you if you want me to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Six is 143, 159. Six is not enough. Eight, 145. By my math, eight on the first ball. 
That's just my math. You do your thing. We have order number 37 for ratio ready in the grill. Order number 37 for ratio ready in the grill. Man, after hanging in there so well, missing that four pin is a tough pill to swallow. If my math is correct, eight on the first ball will lock it up. If my math is incorrect, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, let's see, 145, one, yes, eight is correct. Less than eight, he'll need some more pins. Gets it left. Gets it right in the one, two. It's a matter of who finished strongest, and he does in the eighth, ninth, and tenth. We have seen some clutch finishes the last couple weeks on tour. Yeah, you had such a good run. Yeah, I was gonna let you finish that. Still, yeah. Last week in Mesa, we saw Aaron Coleman finish off so tough. Josh up in Utah about three weeks ago, and a wonderful eighth, ninth, and tenth for Matherly to polish off title number two and crease his points lead. He's leading Caitlin Avagania for all conference points. They didn't make the trip out here. <laughs> More than forgivable. That's halfway across the country for them from San Diego. So he's going to start to build up that lead and you need all the points you can because we got double points events coming up, the triple points invitationals and quad at TPC. So see if we can show off and make this fancy wash out here. No better time to leave a 7-10 after Pure in the strike in the 10th. 190 to 169 is the final. Two nice kids pulling a nice title match, but that's Caden Madley coming away with win number two. We'll do it all over again tomorrow back here in Lubbock. Tomorrow.